Welcome back to the Dry Fasting Club. Today, we're going to be talking all about osmolites and what the hell are they and why they're so important to dry fasting and also why is no one talking about them? Before we go too deep on osmolites, let's talk about anhydrobiosis. So I'm going to be focusing here on two or even three of my articles, kind of like a mix of the anhydrobiosis article, the osmolite article, and even some of my osmolite protocol. So to start, what is anhydrobiosis? And anhydrobiosis is basically something that certain organisms can use where they basically go into a form of stasis when the, all their water or most of their water goes away. So they almost shut down and go into like a cryo sleep. And then when water gets reintroduced to these organisms, they can spring back to life years, years further ahead. Maybe 50 years can pass and they'll just spring back. So the organisms that can use anhydrobiosis are usually termed as immortal beings. And I think it's very interesting to kind of look into them and see what kind of correlations we can draw into dry fasting. So we obviously know that vertebrates, there are no known vertebrates that can actually perform anhydrobiosis, but that's probably correlated to how complex and big the organism is. But that doesn't mean that we can't share certain characteristics, at least on a smaller scale. So obviously we can look into nematodes and certain worms and things like tardigrades and other things, and we can see what happens in their bodies when they shut down. And we know that dehydration, if it was acutely given to our cells, just like a quick dehydrating hypertonic type of shock, the cell will most likely die. It starts with like the proteins falling apart under the pressure of the water leaving and they sort of misfold and get unraveled. But what happens in these animals that keeps everything together even when the water goes away? And the answer is osmolites. So these can be inorganic or organic osmolites and there's a few different ones out there and you can actually look into my osmolite protocol to see what are the most common ones and the ones that i think are the most synergistic when you are dry fasting and how you can better prep your body for it but basically these osmolites protect those cells keep them keep the proteins folded correctly and allow them to basically wait until water comes back the coolest thing about anhydrobiosis is that even if there is stress involved and a lot of changes that occur while the water is leaving the body, when they rehydrate, the cells are able to bounce back to their former health completely. So that means that any damage that has occurred previously gets fixed upon rehydration. And there can be some sort of correlation here to allowing humans to induce stress, which we know is beneficial because it stimulates stem cells. It basically, any hormetic stress forces the body to come back stronger. But the worry about hormetic stress is that we're going to induce so much stress and damage that we can't really rebound completely. And over time, we actually accumulate, we create cumulative stress that actually worsens us in the long run. But because we're seeing these improvements here and we're seeing a full rebound back to health, we can see and translate this into a way that we can induce stress but still reap all the benefits. So sort of like have your cake and eat it too. So now I'll just quickly jump into the main article which is called Osmolites are one of the keys to surviving dehydration when fasting. And what are osmolites? I have a beautiful picture here. Um, you can see that we have proteins here on the left side and that stress conditions partially unfold the proteins, which is bad. And we can see that as that stress condition increases, then if we can get osmolite concentrations to increase in the cells, they fo fully fold the proteins back. But if we don't have those osmolites, we have degradation, soluble precursors, and things like neurodegeneration and amyloid plaque can appear. And if uh, you've ever researched or dealt with Alzheimer diseases and diseases of the brain in yourself or family members, the amyloid plaque might start ringing a bell. 
and you might start connecting the dots that this is probably a very important part of the whole pathology of Alzheimer's. And then here we have another image of how it looks like in the cell. And we have this cell here, osmotic stress, partially folded, unfolded protein. So the water is slowly leaving the cell. So it's causing stress because there is less pressure inside of the cell and it's basically opening up the protein. Well, there's basically less pressure inside of the cell and that may means there's not enough pressure holding the proteins together. They start unraveling and then we see how it moves on as osmolites come in and they start to stabilize the cell there you can see them around the outside perimeter forcing what remains of the water inside to bring back that pressure and balance which brings back the proteins together so that's why it's so important to gradually introduce stress to the body because if the process of dehydration occurs on a gr gradual enough level and that means not over dehydrating yourself with crazy exercise while you're doing longer dry fasts the body can slowly adapt and it brings in these osmolates and everything stays perfectly fine i do believe that osmolates are the key to dry fasting correctly and not causing any damage and they're also the key to your health even without fasting uh, osmolite concentrations are important to prevent a lot of age-related cellular diseases Osmolites are key to things like structured water and holding things incorrectly, which is another very important thing. Uh, for example, studies suggest that not just adding osmolites, but also creating a state of hyperosmolarity, which is dehydration inside cells, could be beneficial. This state is thought to remove disorganized water from cells and encourage the absorption of osmolites. What this does is it restructures the water, restores normal cell function, especially in cancer cells. So basically, once osmolites are well balanced in the body and your cells have uptaken enough of them, this is going to fix a lot of the cellular processes and metabolic pathways in the body. So it's very important and I do believe that dry fasting actually depletes and uses up a lot of the osmolites. What are common osmolites? Well, you can always look at my uh, osmolite protocol to see uh, my ideas, but just off the top of my head, we're dealing with things like glycine, taurine, glycerol. And if you're hearing glycerol and making the connection to fatty acids and glycerol during ketosis, kudos to you. And proline, and there are so many other ones, believe it or not, urea, um, which is in your urine and increases during the dry fast, is actually an osmolite as well. So it's interesting how the body has evolved mechanisms to help in those states of dehydration. And it shows us that our body is meant to go through dehydration. It has evolved practices to go through it. And it's an additional hormetic stress. And we already know that stressors on the body are beneficial. Find me someone that says that exercise is not good for you. I'll wait. Anyways, just like calorie restriction is a stress and is beneficial, dehydration is good. And if done correctly, we have evolved to, we have co-evolved with that process to make us stronger and live longer. So I hope that you dig into this a little bit deeper. I hope you understand the correlation of osmolites to dry fasting. And I hope that this helps you in designing your own protocols and ask further questions. And until next time, good luck on your dry fasting journey. Thanks for sticking around. If you liked the video, leave a comment and share your ideas. And if you're looking for very detailed and unique protocols, check out the dryfastingclub.com. You'll find a lot there. You can even book a quick chat with me. There's also a free Discord link that you can find on the site. And I highly recommend you check out the forums and share your insights and experiences about dry fasting. Uh, you can kind of treat it like accountability, but really, you can help a lot of other people. And as always, remember, no two people are the same, so every fasting experience is unique. Good luck on your dry fasting journey.